So with that optimistic note, let me show you why I don't think there's any solution. This is the carbon dioxide, note the suppressed zero. This starts at 2,000 zeros down here. Of carbon dioxide emissions from China and the United States. The United States has actually gone down in emissions over the last couple of years due to the recession. During the recession, the Chinese emissions went up between 7 and 9 percent. This is last year here is 2006. In the newspaper yesterday, there was a report by Reuters that, uh, that gave the results of a report from a Netherlands agency. Can't quite read this here. The red didn't come out very well. It's an update from the Netherlands Environmental Assessment Agency. And this has the current level of carbon dioxide emitted by China every year to be 50% above that of the United States. It passed in 2006. 2006, I felt, was a seminal year. Because at this point, it's true. They, they, they have four times the population of the US. So they are emitting less per person. And therefore, according to the logic of most people at Berkeley, they have every right to do this. And therefore, this increase they have every right to let it go, and we shouldn't stop them. And Al Gore says there should be no limits whatsoever on China. But the U.S. should cut down, because we've been responsible for about one quarter of the global warming we've had so far. The United States has. Whereas China is a newcomer, they have the right to emit a lot. Let me show you what happens if, in last year in Copenhagen, in December, there was a meeting, President Obama went, and the representatives from China went, <laughs> The New York Times and, 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 and many others were in favor of there being a treaty that would limit the U.S. growth and make us reduce by 80 percent over the next 50 years, 40 to 50 years. That was the requirement. This was in the proposed treaty. The Chinese were supposed to reduce, by, reduce their emission intensity by 4 percent per year. And this is something they were willing to do. And so I thought President Obama would reach an agreement with China on this. It turned out no agreement was reached. And the reason no agreement was reached had nothing to do with Republicans refusing to say, to say that they would eventually ratify this treaty. Treaties aren't ratified before they're signed. Al Gore signed the, 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 the Kyoto Treaty, just never got ratified. So you sign the treaty, then you try to persuade the country it's a good thing to ratify. No, what happened was China refused to allow inspections. And to my amazement, President Obama decided that without inspections, he could not sign this treaty. Now, it's also true that while he was there, my op-ed piece came out in the Wall Street Journal that I doubt that it was what caused him not to sign the treaty, but who knows? I, could, I can dream. My op-ed piece in the Wall Street Journal showed what would happen if the treaty were signed and everybody actually abided. So this is the dream scenario for the Copenhagen Treaty that didn't get signed. This is what the law would be if President Obama had signed it. So what I've done here is here's the United States, down here, about six gigatons per year. And it started decreasing, cutting out, going down to 20% of its emissions over 50 years, 40 years. OK, so this, that's what we were going to pledge to do. What about China? They would cut their emissions intensity by 4% per year. So put them together with India, this is what would happen to them. Now, wait a minute. It's supposed to cut. Why is it going up? The key word was emission intensity. I, I, I watched the news hour on PBS, and they said, and China has offered to cut its emissions by 4% per year. I went, oh, God, even the news hour left out the word intensity. What does intensity mean? It's a technical word that means if your economy grows by 10% per year, then your emissions are only allowed to grow by 6% per year. You compare it to the growth of the economy. That's what, that's what they were offering. Now, their economy has been growing at 10% per year, not quite the last year, but for the last 20 years, the average has been 10% per year. 20 years of 10% growth. That's not a bubble. They're just catching up. They're simply becoming modernized. It doesn't require new technologies. It just means to really modernize their economy. So it's been doing this for 20 years, and I believe it can do it for another 20 years. If they do it for another 30 years, then their economy will still be half of ours per person. 
So there's a lot of room for them to expand and modernize. So let's say the treaty was signed and their economy continued to grow at 10% a year, but their, but their emissions only grew at 6% per year. Then this is what you get from the emerging economies. And then I have them in the year 2040 deciding now that they're half of the value of the United States per person, half of our GDP, assuming we hadn't grown. Now they can start cutting too, and that's why I show that little notch up there. So what you see here is in the very near future, the carbon is coming from the emerging world. To whom a lot of people believe they have every right to do this. What it shows is that no matter what we do, it's irrelevant. 